Here's everything you need to craft a batch of perhaps the single tastiest treat known to man. And it begins with the pastry. And this is a double batch because one of the truisms of pastry is that it's just as easy to make a lot as a little. And after you taste these butter tarts, you're going to be pretty happy to have extra pastry for the next batch. Start by whisking together the dry ingredients. Three cups of all-purpose flour, one cup of sugar, half a teaspoon of salt, and an entire freshly ground nutmeg. Pastry doughs tend to be defined by the fat in the dough. And since this is for butter tarts, well, I might as well use butter, but not just any butter, frozen butter. Eight ounces of it, two sticks. Check this out. This is without question the easiest way I know to put butter into flour. One of the secrets to great pastry is how you incorporate the fat into the flour. The key is to do it in such a way that the fat remains distinct, that it doesn't just melt into the flour because when it remains distinct, you get flaky pastry. So freezing the butter ingredient allows you to quickly mix it into the dough and it doesn't melt. And that's why the next step is ice water. A half cup. Just stir this together until a loose dough begins to form and then knead the works until it starts to come together and form a, a solid ball of dough. I love how you can see all the little tiny bits of nutmeg in there. That says flavor. Get lots of flour. Flour your hands, flour the work surface, flour your rolling pin, start rolling. Butter tarts are always baked individually, usually in a standard muffin pan. And as you fit the dough into the muffin pan, you're always gonna have to form a pleat on one side. And that's okay, that pleat says handmade. I think one of the reasons butter tarts are so popular is because they're so easy to make. I mean, I wish every filling that I put into a pastry dough was this simple. A couple of cracked eggs, half a cup or so of maple syrup, not corn syrup, maple syrup, lots more flavor here, and a half cup of brown sugar, and two teaspoons of vanilla. There's a lot of nice flavor here, but I'm taking these to the next level. These tarts are all about butter, which normally you just melt and you pour in, and that's very nice, but this is where the magic happens, because there are actually three different things in that pot. There's the butter fat, of course, but there's also water and milk fat solids. And now that the water has evaporated, the butter fat has risen in temperature and browned the milk fat solids, and that's where the flavor is. You want every last drop of that good stuff in your butter tarts. I mean every last drop. This pan shouldn't have to get cleaned when you're done scraping it. And now just a, just a little secret ingredient, just, just a couple of tablespoons of flour will really help hold the filling together as it bakes. But this is just between you and I because the flour is not always traditional. And what better place to pour butter batter than straight into butter pastry? The only part about butter tarts that I don't like the waiting, the anticipating. Fortunately, it only takes 15 minutes to bake butter tarts, so I'll suck it up. All these flavors just plain work. But I have to admit, as much as I like the maple syrup and the vanilla and the brown butter filling, the breakout hit here is the nutmeg, the nutmeg pastries.